Keep your head down. These men are Surinamese citizens, resistance fighters determined to liberate their country. They are being trained in French Guiana by American soldiers of fortune. In this exclusive CNN report, the two American mercenaries known as Dr. John and Boss told us about their efforts. I was retained by the Council for the Liberation of Suriname last year to prepare various military options uh, that would enable the Council to regain their country from the dictator Bader set down here now training uh, this cadre who will then in turn train more of their own people and hopefully will be launching an offensive uh, against the dictator in the not too distant future. This is the country the resistance fighters plan to attack. Suriname, a former Dutch colony on the northeast coast of South America. After 300 years of Dutch rule, Suriname became independent in 1975. However, this man, Sergeant Major Desi Bouderset, overthrew the legitimate government of Suriname in 1980 and as dictator promoted himself to lieutenant colonel. A Marxist, Bouderset has progressively tightened his control over Suriname. I'm the Carl Though CNN was granted special permission to film in Suriname, our repeated request to talk to Colonel Bouderset about the economic and political situation was repeatedly denied. Bouderset claims that there have been four coup attempts against him since 1980 and all have been put down. In December 82, Bouderset had 15 prominent members of the opposition rounded up and executed. He says they were shot trying to escape. Bouderset then rescinded freedom of the press and set up NVD, the government-controlled media. As a result, the Dutch cut off $1.5 billion in aid. Then the United States stopped $1.5 million in technical assistance, leaving Bouderset's single-product economy in shambles. Suriname's economy is almost totally based on the aluminum industry. And as world prices for aluminum vary, so do Suriname's finances. Desperate for funds, Bouderset squeezed the aluminum industry. But the additional levies cut profits, already marginal because of the low worldwide aluminum prices. As a result, Soralco, the country's largest producer, shut down its bauxite mine and may eventually shut down all operations. In January, a strike by aluminum workers caused the appointed government to collapse. Bouderset got a settlement, but was forced to liberalize the new government and promised the return of some freedoms by May. Although Suriname's Prime Minister Udenhout recently returned from Washington with apparently positive results, Colonel Bouderset is caught in a squeeze play. Without assistance from Holland or the United States, Suriname will run out of money in about 18 months. To get assistance, Bouderset must return Suriname to a more democratic system. However, at this moment, Bouderset keeps the country locked down tight. This reporter and cameraman Ken Kelsch had to keep a low profile about our intentions as we were repeatedly searched at roadblocks. Rather than be searched again with politically sensitive videotapes, we had to travel by canoe across the mile-wide piranha-infested Moroni River into French Guiana. As a result of Colonel Bouderset's repressive regime, many thousands of Surinamese left the country. Many of them fled here to French Guiana, where they have formed resistance movements. CNN made contact with one group, the Liberation Council of Suriname, and was granted permission to film its American mercenaries training the resistance fighters at a secret camp inside French Guiana. The leader of the resistance fighters is Roy Batza, a former lieutenant in the Surinamese army. We will intend to take the country back by hard military actions. We are here with uh, a number of men, very well selected, hard trained and uh, we will hit hard in especially places where we know that the enemy is uh, established. The resistance fighters undergo rugged training. The American soldiers of fortune use live yeah, ammunition yeah. to add deadly realism. How do you feel about having to go on uh, against uh, forces that are many times greater? Uh, they're greater in numbers. They have more equipment than us. I believe a good majority of them will run when faced with a disciplined small unit. Tell us about your military experiences. I'm a veteran of the 82nd Airborne Division, also the United States Marine Corps uh, service in Asia. Uh, I fought with the Democratic forces uh, fighting the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, both for Commander Zero and later for a group known as M3. My military experience was with the 101st Airborne Division, long-range recon. Uh, Vietnam. Unconventional warfare, uh, Republic of Vietnam, and 
it lends itself for me training these people to do what I experienced uh, those years ago. Are you working for the CIA? No, I'm not. John, uh, how about you? Are you working for the Central Intelligence Agency? No, I'm not, Jack. I clear every operation uh, with the United States government. I do not work for the United States government, but I never work against it. It's sort of a, a courtesy uh, move on your part? Exactly. One final question. What happens if you fail? What happens if you're caught by Bottersay and his forces? I don't plan to live forever, Chuck. How about you? That would be an occupational hazard which we accept. The American mercenaries have trained the guerrillas in a number of skills, ranging from the maintenance and care of their American-made AR-15 and Mini-14 rifles to effective use of camouflage in the jungle. During tactical training, half the guerrillas set up an ambush. The others on patrol are taught to disperse quickly when attacked and counterattack from behind. Again, the American mercenaries use live ammunition to add realism and to harden their troops. Minor wounds from such training are not uncommon. Marksmanship training is stressed. One round, one hit. French authorities allowed the resistance fighters to train, but watched them closely. Here, two gendarmes conduct a surprise inspection, detaining this reporter and cameraman Ken Kelsch to check passports. They were not aware that our video camera was rolling. The guerrillas said that the French looked the other way for one reason, Ariane. The missile launched from French Guiana is a multi-billion dollar gamble by France and other European nations to tap the booming commercial space market. Having a Cuban-backed Marxist regime next door to export a revolution is not in the French interest. The French did warn that the political situation was shaky and that once the guerrillas struck targets in eastern Suriname, they could not return. The day after CNN was detained by the gendarmes, the French, apparently worried about an international incident, deported the resistance fighters to the Dutch island of Curaçao. One of the American mercenaries has told CNN that the resistance fighters will simply regroup and attack Suriname soon. The stage is now set for a counter-revolution in Suriname. How well this handful of freedom fighters can do against Colonel Bautersay's forces, many times their strength, now depends on their courage 